Okay, let's talk about solving x-intercepts without graphing. Yesterday, you spent a lot of time solving this thing by graphing it and making a table and just keep it, whoops, keep extending this table until you get a y value that is zero. And that is just too time consuming for us. So we don't want to do that every single time. And so it'd be nice to just be able to solve this thing. So let's see if we can just straight up solve it. So what most of us would do is we'd subtract 18 from both sides and we would get x squared minus 9x equals 18. And then some of us would go, oh, well, we have a 9 there, so let's divide by negative 9. And then we get x squared over negative 9 plus x equals negative 2. And then you still have two x's, and you don't know how to combine things, and you're just kind of stuck. You just kind of got a mess. So we can't solve this normally. It doesn't have like a normal solution that we're used to where you just get like x equals something. We have to solve it kind of in a clever way. Now in the polynomial section, we spent a lot of time looking at these trinomials and saying, oh, what can trinomials break up into? Well, they can break up into two binomials. And then I think about, okay, well, it multiplies together to give me x squared. Well, that means it's x and x. And what would multiply together to give me 18, but then add together to give me negative 9? So what would do that would be negative 6 times negative 3. Because when those two things multiply together, they give me positive 18. But when I add them together, they give me negative 9. And you can go back and check to make sure by double distributing to see if you got the previous thing. But this is what it really does break down and factor into. So it factors into this thing. And this is extremely helpful to me because now we have something times something equals zero. So when you think about it, what are the only things that multiply together to give you zero? Well, it has to be zero times some number or some number times zero. That's the only possibilities. If you want to get zero, you got to multiply by zero. So either this thing is zero or this thing is zero. So either x minus six is equal to zero or x minus three is equal to zero. Well, that would just mean that x is equal to six or x is equal to three. And if you went through and you actually went through and you graph this thing, you would find that that is really what the parabola does. It's going to be over on this side and it's going to go right underneath it and it's going to cross at 3 and it's going to cross at 6. So these are my x-intercepts. Let's do one more example. So again, remember, we can't solve this normally, so we do have to factor it. And when I factor this, again, I'm going to think about what multiplies together to give me x squared. That's x times x. What well, multiplies together to give me 4, but then we'll add together to give me 5. Well, that would be 4 and 1. And again, the, with the same logic of saying, okay, if this equals 0, either this over here is my 0, or this over here is my 0, so either x plus 4 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0, and then we go through and solve. So x must be negative 4, or x must be negative 1. And that would be my two x-intercepts. So this is the basic premise, and I'm going to do quite a few more examples in the following videos because you're going to get a lot of different kinds of things that you can factor. So we're going to kind of, most of this will be kind of reviewing factoring and remembering how to factor. But essentially, if you can't graph the thing, we try to break it up into two binomials, see if it will factor, and see what we can get.